it's Rick here from the Game Creators once more. Today we're going to introduce types. They're sort of like containers that can hold different types of data. The benefit of using them is that they're easier to work with. You can remember easily the data within them. If you saw in the last example that we did, we had an array and then we were referencing numbers and we couldn't remember what all the numbers meant. So types makes that a lot easier and also you can mix like integers and floats and uh, strings into the set into one type and you know hold a lot of data and then reference that data. So I built a little game, took me a couple of hours and I've used some media from a past project we did on on the iPhone many moons ago. Um, I'm just gonna run the game so you can see it. So it's a simple uh, touch-based game where you're trying to click and pop these balloon sort of bubbles and if any of them reach the top then the game is over and uh, your score is recorded and then you start again so there's no there we go so high score 22 and you can see it slowed down again as it started again this is much easier to play on a touch device rather than mouse but you get the idea and I have broadcast it so that's the game, quite simple. How does it all work? Well, we've got the normal sort of setup information here. Uh, one uh, commander, I've probably skipped over quite a few times, was set orientation allowed. And that's a command that allows you to decide uh, how your app will play on a device. So it's, let's say it's a, just a landscape game, or in, in this case a portrait game, you'd only want the game to be displayed in portrait mode. And this allows you to do that. Press F1 and you can see that the portrait flags are the first two. So you would have these two as zero and then your app would never be in landscape mode. So that's worth noting and being aware of. Now what's this? Hash constant max bubbles 5? Okay, a constant is a number that never changes. Okay, that's why it's called a constant and we have to use that when we set up our type. Uh, obviously, before you run the game, you can change it to a different number, but I'm saying 5 for my game. Then we've got some variable setup, score, high score, speed up, pop count, game over. And then we come to the type, and what we're doing here is we're creating um, what the type is going to contain. Okay, so you start with the command type, you give it a name, I'm calling it bubble, and inside the type is... Um, well, how many? One, two, three, four, five integers. And we're calling them X, Y, Speed, Alive, Sprite ID. Okay? It'll become clearer how we use that in a moment. The next thing we do is we set up an array called Bubbles as Bubble Type. Okay? Max Bubbles. So we're setting up an array called Bubbles using the type Bubble and it's going to have five types within it. Okay? bit of head scratching might be required, but you'll get the hang of it. The next thing we do is we set the values in the array. So we do for i equals 1 to max bubbles. Max bubbles, remember, is a constant of 5. So it goes around this loop 5 times, and it sets all the values within each of the 5 records within type bubble to these values. Okay, so bubbles i dot x, if you remember, there we've got, that's how you reference it. You do the array name, i is the index, so number one, dot x, referencing this integer, we're making that a random number between 1 and 500. Then we're setting bubbles, again, 1 it would be, dot y, there's the y, and we're making that 960. That's off the screen down the bottom. Then we're setting a speed, a random number between 1 and 5, and then we're setting the bubble to alive equals 0, which means it's not alive. And we do that five times, and all those values get set. Okay, then we include a setup.agc, which is another file. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then we do go sub load media, so that's inside setup.agc. Load media simply loads a background, makes it sprite one, makes it the full screen. Then it loads in a bubble image, and then we do another four next loop one to max bubble, so one to five. So we create a sprite, sprite number two here. And this returns a sprite ID, and we put that into the array bubbles i dot sprite ID. So then we can remember what number that sprite is. 
Then we create a random number between 60 and 140. This is creating the size of the bubble. Then we do set sprite size, and we because we've already stored it in sprite ID, we go to that array, we get the sprite ID back out of it, and we set it to run size X and run size Y, so the bubble will be exactly whatever this value is in its X and Y size. And then we position it off screen, minus 500, minus 100, it's not going to appear on screen. We do that max bubble size, which is five times. Then we load some music, an OG file, which is a compressed music file. Then we load a sound, a pop WAV, and we return out of it. So that's what this ghost upload media does. Then we do play music OG1, so we play that compressed music file, we start it. And then we go into the do loop, the main routine of the game, which say, first we check if game over equals 1. Well, we set game over to equal 1, yes. And this game just starts. So as soon as it says, is it game over? Yes. Okay. Well, now it's not game over, and we're going to reset the score to 0, and then we're going to call reset bubbles. What's reset bubbles? It's this little routine here. Again, it goes through i equals 1 to max bubbles and it basically sets up the X and Y and random positions of the bubbles and makes sure they're all turned off so they're not alive and then sets their sprite positions so they're all reset down the bottom. We know we've already done that when we first set them up but every time the game resets we need to do that. Okay, so that basically starts the game then we randomly start a bubble if certain conditions are correct. So again we we go through all the bubbles and we first say, is this bubble alive? Yes or no? Well, if it's already alive, we don't want to touch it. But if it isn't alive, then we do a check. If a random number between 1 and 50 equals 10, then make that bubble alive. So all that routine is doing is going through all the bubbles and just seeing if they're alive on screen. And then we're checking to see if we can make them alive. Okay, so another four next loop. Again, this one goes through all the bubbles. And the idea of this routine is to move it if it is alive. So it says, if bubbles i alive equals 1, we're going to check if this bubble is alive. If it is, then we're going to take the current y position of the bubble and make it the y position minus the speed of that bubble. Okay. Then we do a quick check to see, is the bubble's y position less than 140? We chose 140 because that's the biggest size bubble, and if it's gone to minus 140, it must be off screen. If it's gone off screen, then that means a bubble has escaped. So we set game over to 1, so the game is over. We reset pop count, we reset speed up to 1. We're going to see those in a moment. And that would end the game. And then we actually set the sprite position of the current sprite that we're looking at. Okay, we get the sprite ID from the type, and we get the X and the Y. And that sets all five sprites if they're moving. Then we check to see if the user has touched the screen or touched the device or clicked with the mouse with get pointer pressed. If pointer pressed equals one then there must have been a touch on the device or a mouse click so the user has done something. So when we say uh, let's set this variable hit sprite it's going to equal get sprite hit the current get pointer x and get pointer y position so it will check that X and that Y to see whether there's a sprite that's been touched on that location. Really handy uh, command that. So hit sprite is the value. Okay, and here is where we're going to check that value. So again, another for next loop that goes through all the bubbles. And it says if this bubble that we're checking now, if its sprite ID equals the sp hit sprite that has been touched by the user, if that's the same as the bubble we're checking, then we must have hit it. In which case, we play sound 1, which is the pop sound. We increase the score by 1. Now, do we speed the game up? Okay, we have a thing called pop count. At the beginning, it's 0, and we increase it by 1 every time a bubble is pressed. So if pop count equals 5, then increase speed up and reset pop count to 0. So that basically goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 every time. Every time you're touching a bubble, 1. Then another bubble, two, three. And when it gets to five, then it increases speed up. So if you made that a bigger number, then the game would speed up half as fast. Okay. So pop count becomes zero again, and then counts up to another five, and speed up keeps increasing. This routine here, clear the pop bubble. 
this is going to reset the bubble to not alive. It's going to reset its X and its Y position and it's going to reset a new random speed. But it adds speed up to between 1 and 5. So as speed up increases, let's say it got to 5, it would choose a random number between 1 plus 5, 6, and 5 plus 5, 10. Okay, so that just keeps increasing. We reset sprite hit to zero because we don't want to keep resetting the collision. Then we reposition the sprite so that it's definitely off screen. And that's the end of that check and the end of that loop. Okay. Then we're printing the score and the high score to the screen. We've got this set print size. That allows you to change the size of a text. And here's a check for the high score. If the score is greater than the high score, then the high score must be the score. Uh, we also have a check for if the current music that's playing, all right, get music playing OG, if that goes to zero, then the music must have stopped. Okay, so then we just play music OG 1 again. So that allows you to keep looping the music. Then we do a sync and then we loop again. So that's the game. It's quite simple really. Um, you can download the source code. You can play around with the values. Uh, a fun thing to do is obviously change the max bubbles. So if I change that to say 20, we're going to have a lot of bubbles on screen. Lots to click, lots to try and beat. Also try broadcasting the game to a device and playing it on there. Um, and if you want to see how good AGK is, try a thousand bubbles. I'm not sure it's going to be easy to play though. There we go. Yeah, too many. Too many. I mean, you could make it really easy. Just have two. That's, that's programming. That's the fun of it. You know, I had that idea this morning and I've implemented it. We've introduced types. Hopefully that will start to make sense. I'd encourage you to try it out and play around with types. And, and get to know them because they're very powerful. Okay, please subscribe. Please ask me questions if you've got any. And uh, yeah, have a great time programming. Bye.